All right, all right. It's not my weekend podcast with your boy Jerry G. What is up, everybody? It's Thursday. It's August 31st. It's the last day of the month. Tomorrow, September 1st, right into Labor Day weekend, dog. And uh, see, wait, just like that, just like that, four months left for the 2023 to end, dog. Uh, ¿Qué pasó? Just like, I see, that's it? That's it? I sound like a girl. I sound like a girl that's having sex with me. That's it? That's how you got? That's it? Anyways, enough self-deprecation, dog. Uh, ay, 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 self-deprecation, fool. Um, see, wait. It's it's um last couple months left. Here we go down the wire, down the stretch. This is my favorite time of the year, to be honest with you, fool. I love the fall after Labor Day. It's on. That's this is where Jerry G shines, compa. This is where, the summer, dog. The heat it takes a toll on me, bro. Like that's why I've been kind of laying low. It's you know I, again. I I didn't grow up like a lot of you privileged motherfuckers out there, dog. I, I didn't grow up with AC. Still today, man, I'm 43 years old, dog, and I still don't have a central air unit. Yeah, I, 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 I no, I, I don't. I just learned about central air units actually not too long ago. <laughs> uh, that the, that's uh, ventilation in the house, like throughout the home. Yeah, I don't have that. I've never been raised with that fool ever, ever. Still today, still today. I live in an old ass house in HP, where you gotta plug in your air conditioners, you gotta plug in your fans. I still live like that. Yes, that's how I stay grounded and I stay humble for you guys. Um, yeah, I don't. I, I just the, in the summer just it has always taken a toll on me, bro. I don't do good with the summer. Um, I hate sweating. I hate it, dog. I just I hate it. Uh, I hate the feeling of heat um so si me desespero wey. me desespero y la chingada wey. I'm, i don't do good with it for i'm i'm bearing with it now now that i'm older i bear with it a little better such as dressing more accordingly right drinking more liquids right realize how important water is when you know the, the dehydration is very important for hydration it's very important though Anyways, I don't do good in summer. Spring is cool, but it's spring also always feels very short, right? Because it gets hot pretty early, right? In Cali, in LA, right? Spring is what? March, April, May? Más o menos? Más o menos. Don't, please don't correct me. Relax, relax. Google's relax. Más o menos, right? March, April, May. I, I go based off sports, bro. That's baseball, dog. Baseball starts in March. Spring training, March, April, May, we got ourselves our spring. But around May, even late, even April, it starts to heat up, fool. So spring doesn't feel like spring for long. Shoots into summer, which stretches out summer. Now it's been hot since April and May. And when I say hot, I'm talking about 95 degrees in L.A. I know. I know we got people out there in New Mexico and Arizona and Texas cooking their asses off, literally, but nah, I'm just saying, fool. 95, we're not used to this, dog. We're at LA, and I say this because I only say this because I know I got listeners from all over the country. Ay, 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 from all over the United States, dog. All right? Even in the world, dog. I, 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 I know. I know. I looked at the fucking numbers, dog. I looked at the numbers. Shout outs to Germany. Ay, ay. And um, I don't know. Listen. There's people from everywhere. Dog. That's why I, I, I over explain it a little bit. But people from we're in L.A., we're not used to this shit, dog. We're not used to 95. We're not used to 100. 100, we freak out. We're not used to it. We're at 78 to 83 degrees all year round, bro. Summer, winter, spring, toda la madre, way. Always 78 to 83 pretty much every day, fool. So... When this shit shoots up for ninety to ninety five to hundred for a long period of time for like a week, which we we're going through right now, we've gone through all this week. It's been over ninety degrees everywhere. Yeah, fool. Enough is enough, dog. You know, and I don't do good with the heat. I just don't, bro. I just, it's not for me, dog. I'm a hoodie guy. I've told you guys, I love wearing the hoodies, the sweaters. You know, just being bundled up, dog. The jeans, dog. The sweats, fool. 
That's what I like, dog. I love that weather. Oof, cuddling up with someone, hopefully the opposite sex. <laughs> and uh, yeah, bro. But I don't do good. I don't do good with the damn, damn weather. Um, there's very. Uh, that's why I I talk shit and I make fun. Of course, I talk in good fun. And when I do go to like Arizona and New Mexico, you know about their weather and how they deal with it. And I'm always like, why, how, como, why you do this to yourself? I get it. You know, it takes a lot of bravery. First of all. Second of all, you don't think like, you don't give a shit about weather when you're thinking about the bigger picture, dog, which is like your family, your kids, your well-being, your, all that. I get it. Fool. It's all fun and games, fool. LA, trust me, fool. Like, as I get older, obviously, because I'm in this fucking media right now, I have to pretty much be here in LA. I love LA. Always will love LA. But I get why people leave. I just do, fool. It's just so expensive, dog. Like, gas is five fifty right here right now, fool. Five. 50, imagínate, güey. 550, and that's a cheap gas, compa. See, but no, it's, 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 it's too much, fool. It's definitely too much. Um, but anyways, all right, let's, let's keep going. Let's, 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 enough of that. Enough of the weather talk, fool. Relax, Dallas Reigns. All right, let's keep moving. Let's keep it. Let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. Uh, let me see what else here. I got my, some, my notes. I got, I got notes. I got notes. I'm a little prepared this time. A ver, a ver. Uh, Bob Barker passed away, uh, this week. Um, 99 years old. That's the only reason I really bring it up, man. I mean, he was cool. You know, my condolences. Good life. Good, you know. Hey, dog. I watched The Price is Right. We all watched The Price is Right, dog. Bob Barker, fool. Spay and neuter your pets, dog. That fool. Bob Barker, dog. So he passed away at 99, which is, first of all, goals, right? Goals, dog. I mean, for a long time, when I was in my 20s, I was like, I want to live past 100, dog. I want to I wanna see... Past the hundred dollars, that would be fucking dope, right? But now, but that's what I was. I would say that when I was in my twenties, because you're feeling good, dog. Right? You're feeling healthy as shit. You're in the prime of your life. Of course, you want to live to hundred when you're feeling that like that. When you're twenty four years old, of course. Now, I'm forty four years old, dog, and I'm like, heck, nah, bro. I'm done, fool. Like, get me out of here soon, fool. I don't know how long, much more of this I can take. Like, everything hurts now, fool. Everything, dog. Don't the way. And imagine at 100 or close to that in the 80s and the 90s, when you're 80s and 90s, fool. I don't know. I just don't want to be in the way of anybody. And here's the other thing, dog. I'm going to get a little deep with you guys right now, fool. I've got sons. I've got sons, right? Three boys. And history shows, statistics show that boys... Men do not take care of their dads when they're old, fool. They'll take care of their moms. Oh, yeah. They'll take care of their mama all day, every day, till the day she dies, as they should. As they should. Right? But boys won't take care of their fathers the same, dog. Like, not like that, fool. Like, after a while, like, hey, homie, we good? Because I'm good. Go, go this way, you go that way. It's all good, right? We good, we good. That's how it is, dog. I mean, that's, let's just be real, fool. That's just how natural shit instincts are. That's the one reason I always wanted a daughter. I go, man, I just want a daughter. Not that I ever did. Not, not bad enough. I didn't want a daughter bad enough. But if I ever did have a daughter, it would be because of that. Because daughters do take care of their fathers. Daughter, daughters will take care of their fathers till the day they fucking die, fool. Right? They'll always be daddy's little girl. I don't have a daughter, right? So first of all, I'm already like, dude, I'm like, what the hell's gonna happen to me in my seventies and eighties and nineties, dog? Like, I'm gonna be just fucking pimping it at some old timers' home, dog, trying to get mine and shit, you know, trying to catch viejito syphilis, right? Um, but by the way, that's that's a thing that happens, fool. Like, a lot of these old timers' homes, there's like herpes breakouts and shit, dog. Of all these viejitos getting it on with each other, dog, which is fucking crazy. That's a deal. Look it up, fool. Google that shit, dog. Um, anyways, I, that's how I picture my life to be. I'm like, man, it's gonna be like just getting it on with the 80 year old bitches, dog. I tell a day, yo solo, way I'll stall three stay away. I don't know. I don't know, fool. Um, I don't know. I don't know, fool. Um, just think about it though, right? You're, it's it's true, right? Boys will take care. I'm trying to think of, oh, like, for my example, my mom, my mom does live with my sister, 
um, she's always lived with my sister, and it's, it's almost by default, though. Like, my sister wishes, wishes someone else would take over it, huh? But Jerry G's not going to do it, and my little brother, who, by the way, has relapses and back in the streets, and if you see him out there in the streets of fucking Victorville or Ontario, man, just, you know, be careful, fool. Lock your doors. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's out there. Um, they've been dealing with that this week, fool. He's out there in the streets again. Uh, anyway, so he's not going to take care of my mom. Me, um, I got married kind of young. I started having kids, you know, early age, doing my own thing. Um, I was always down. I, w- I would love to have my mama. I would love to have my mama. Um, but I can't with my job, fool. Like, I'm not around enough. She needs someone there like every day, Monday through fucking Friday, Monday through Sunday for every day. Um, so my sister has them. And what I'm trying to tell you is that it's not ideal. It's not ideal. Uh, and then I, my sister like stresses and always complaining and she's venting and she's like, wait, when, when are you? Gonna? And then I got two sisters. So they, she bounces back and forth between my two sisters and both of them just bounce her out back each other because... Women don't get along with women, fool. Women just don't get along with women after a while. They just don't, fool. They clash a lot. They complain about everything, the cooking, the seasoning, the cleaning, the the parenting, dog. They just fight and fucking fight about everything, fool. It's something that obviously uh, mother and sons don't do as often, right? I'm just trying to prove my point here, dog. Just trying to prove my point here. Let me know if I fucking make sense. Um, daughters are well known that they will take care of their father, fool. They will take care of their father as long as it takes. My sisters take care of my dad, of course, but they, my, my, my dad and my mom are a package, fool. My mom and dad are a package, and my dad is still at this, you know, he's very independent. My dad's very independent, loves to do his own thing, just has his, he has his beer, does his little gardening, you know, cleans the house, cleans the garage, cleans the backyard, picks up the dog shit. He's just like, he's just always doing something, and it's all the way. Very independent. My mom is at an age where she needs more caring for it. She needs more attentiveness, her medicines, and she needs that more, fool. So it's, it's a little different. Never had a daughter, fool. So not having a daughter, fool, is going to bite me in the ass. So now, now my only hope is that the three boys that I do have marry into a very loving and caring and endearing lady, wife, that will be like, hey, your dad, what's up? We got to take care of your dad. And then my kid's going to be like, man, fuck that fool, dog. Man, fuck that fool. He was gone every fucking weekend, man. Man, fuck that guy. And then hoping my my kid's wife is like, no, don't say that, Diego. You can't say that about your dad. Look at him. He's all weak and frail and useless. And I'll be like, I'm standing right here. My fucking hearing aid is all the way to on high right now. I can hear you. And she's like, oh, sorry, mister. But what I'm trying to tell you is that you shouldn't be living alone. You should not, like, be, you can barely watch over yourself. We can, we're here for you, you know. You're my father-in-law. Ay, ay, ay. And I'll be like, you're right. You're right. And then my sons will be like, ah, come on, dude. Are you serious, man? Fuck. He's going to take up the fucking TV, man, the remote, dog. He's going to use up all the shit. He's going to fucking, nah, man, this guy. And uh, and then, then uh, that's, what I'm, that's my only hope here, fool. That's the only hope that I have right now is that this chick, this ex, this wife, um, I'm not saying ex-wife, this wife, I don't say like this ex as in like a, as in like an algebra problem. Ex, you know, can ex plus my son can, she can be the answer to helping me out and not fucking, I don't know, I'm just rambling, dog. I'm sure I'm, other option would be that I, I fucking, you know, shack, shack, shack up with, Another little viejita, and we die happily ever after together like the fucking notebook, dog. All right, all right, let me get back on track. Let me get back on track. So what I was trying to get at is that Bob Barker passes, right? So he's 99 years old, and apparently in his deathbed, 
as last days in life in this world are coming to an end and he feels it, he knows this, he, re he wants to, he decides that he wants to binge watch his favorite show. Shows, or maybe, but show, they, they talk specifically about two and a half men, that he binge watched two and a half men this last week on this earth, which I thought was an odd choice, right? I don't think many of us here have two and a half men as your top, show to watch on your deathbed dog at least not me dog i mean the show's fine the show's cool but it's not like i want to watch this with my last breath for for me it would probably be it would probably be hmm, probably breaking bad breaking bad was probably my favorite show ever but breaking bad is one of those shows i would want to watch from beginning to end and who knows if i have a whole week of it in me to watch it. What if I die like mid, mid, you know, mid show, mid season? I uh, would, you know, and it, but, uh, but then again, I know how it ends. Anyways, I want to watch a show where I could just watch any, any episode and it doesn't matter, right? I think for me, it would probably be Family Guy, dog. I was a big fan. I am a big Family Guy fan. Even today, they're still coming out with bangers, bro. In 2023, you know how hard that is to do? You know how hard it is to do? A Family Guy episode in 2023, dog, with all the sensitivity out there, dog, with all the politically correctness and wokeness there is out there. I got to hand it to Family Guy, dog. These guys still, still deliver most of the time. Of course, they have some bad episodes, but they most of the time they still deliver. They go hard. You know, they 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 balance that line. They do their pinche um, racial jokes, their sexist jokes, their... Gay jokes, they're all these dumb jokes that still hit for me, dog. And I love, I love watching that kind of kind of material. For like, what Family Guy does is pretty impressive. Is what I'm trying to tell you, bro. First of all, they're on Fox, which is a regular network TV channel, around 9 p.m. Second of all, Fox was bought out by Disney, so technically they're a Disney, you know, show now. Which, you know, Disney would never allow such mess, but they're grandfathered in, so they kind of have to deal with them a little. And second of all, they've been doing this shit for over 20 years, dog. I remember when they first started, dog. I was in my early 20s. And I don't know if you guys remember this, for those, for real uh, fans of Family Guy, Family Guy would come and go. Like, the first, like, season one through, like, five or so, they would get canceled often. So they would, like... So, like, for example, the first five seasons took almost 10 years because it would be gone for, like, a year or two. Then it would bring it back. They would legit get canceled because low ratings and, of course, they would, you know, all the people that would complain about how harsh this show is in the inappropriateness, even back in 20, 20, 2005 or whatever, four, they were complaining all the time about it. So it would get canceled. Then it would come back again. And dude, for a sh how many shows do you know that would get canceled and then come back? For? Like, that's how good this show is. I love Family Guy, dog. I, I stand by it always. I get it. They do go a little too far sometimes, man. But damn, sometimes we need that, bro. We need that. With all the, with all the weak-ass fools out there nowadays, dog, all the sensitivity, all these people getting their butt hurt all the time, fool, we still need people like We still need shows like Family Guy to keep us in line. So I'm trying to tell you. To keep us in time. Same goes for South Park, but South Park, I'm not a big fan. I, I like South Park. I got my, my, my respetos. Mi respetos a South Park, but it's something I just never really got myself into. But I, maybe I've seen maybe like 10 to 20 South Park episodes from beginning to end, and they've all been good. They've all been good, but it's not something that I want to like watch often, all the time. But they're great. They're great. Uh, and, you know, they're on cable TV. The, first of all, they're harder to find. And they're always in awkward time zones, right? They're always like, uh, every, you know, you, you only run into South Park accidentally. It's always like, it's obviously in Comedy Central. Like, when are you ever on Comedy Central, right? You have to be literally channel surfing to run into Com to Comedy Central and to South Park. And when you, every time I run into South Park, it's always like in the middle of the episode. So I got to like figure out what's going on and this and that. And and Comedy Central, the commercials, oh my goodness, right? The commercials, dog, all day with these fools, dog. Dude, I've timed the commercial breaks on these shows on the Comedy Central and MTV. And Dude, one time I timed that was with my kids, dog, we're, we're eating and watching TV. 
and we're watching a, I forgot what we were watching, and we started timing it. it that, the commercial break was like six minutes and 50 seconds, almost seven minutes of commercials, bro. Se pasan de verga, güey. Se pasan, güey. Anyway, that's why Cable's dead. So that's what I would do, dog. If I would be at my deathbed, it would probably be that. Sopranos is up there. Seinfeld is up there. Those are my favorite shows. And Seinfeld is another episode, another show that I could just jump in. Doesn't really, you don't need to watch the episode before or after, dog. Um, for sure. But that, that's good. I thought that was pretty cool. I think I would want to do that. I would want to, like, die quietly watching TV, just fucking surfing the net and shit, probably the YouTube channels, seeing what's up. Yeah, that's what I probably would watch, for sure. All right, moving on. Let's let's get into it here, fool. Um, I bet, wait. I'm dragging, dog. Uh, let me see here. I got some notes for you guys. Let me see what I can do here. I bet. I've got a couple shout outs here, dog. I actually took some screenshots. I got some Blue Beetle feedback. I see a lot of you guys started, went out to go see the Blue Beetle stuff. I saw some YouTube uh, stuff, New Rock Stars, and Let Me Explain. Those are cool YouTube channels that break down movies and shows. Y'all should check those out if you get a chance. And I like to go there. Let me explain, guys. Actually, a Mexican dude. So that was actually a pretty good one. Um, I got a couple here. Let me see here. Oh, I got the hiccups, dog. All right. Shout out to David Velasco. David Velasco. Jerry, thanks for the last, bro. Just heard your Blue Beetle review. Hopefully someone mentioned by now that the grandma in the movie was an Adelita. Yes, but it was a stretch, compa. It was a stretch and it was a little force, man. I, I get it. I don't even think the grandma is in the right age range for that, fool. I think the, the elitas were like over 100 years ago, fool. Might be wrong. Correct me. Fight me, fool. Fight me. But that's what I mean. Like, I don't even think she was age. The accuracy in that was not correct. But anyways, yes. That's why she had the trenzas and her attire. They never come out and say it, but they reference her revolutionary past. That's why she was a Rambo, like a like warrior. Awesome movie, though. I agree. I, uh, the Alita, I just I, again, I I didn't put too much thought into the to the abuelita way. Uh, I thought she was cute. I thought she had a dope, cool screen presence in the beginning. Great actress, dope. I just felt they overdid it with all the gun. With the machinery, with like that was se pasaron way, se pasaron way. Again, again, I know it's a superhero movie, but they uh, they try and make us be, they try and make it as believable as possible. All of these movies, MCU, uh, DCU, and that's what I appreciate about these movies. Like that's what I like about these movies is that they're superheroes in a, in our world, in 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 our in this in this world, and so right so. And again, so if you want to do that, that's where you lose me with shit like that, fool. Um, but yeah, I mean, she was cool. I mean, I'm not going to talk too much shit about it, uh, about the grandma, because at the end of the day, she, it was entertaining, for sure. Uh, here's another one. Uh, DJ Gus. Shout out to DJ Gus. Hey, playa. So took the fam to see Blue Beetle, and we loved it. Didn't mind any of the Mexican stuff they threw in. George did good. Other than that ponytail, we give it two tamales up, dog. Oh, that's pretty good, dog. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, uh, you say, I give it those tamales and a champurrado up for sure. Um, yeah, George Lopez, like I said, killed it. His attire was, right, a little odd. Uh, again, a little plot holes with his character. Like, is he smart? Is he dumb? What is he? Uh, is he anti communist is he anti-government is he like what is he like a little bit of plot holes in that but other than that again entertaining killed it the mexicans references again maybe that was just me right and i guess like any latino mexican watching this you're watching it and then it's a lot of stuff is obvious and it just slaps you in your face right but for like the casual person maybe it's not it's not like that so they just don't, don't really pay too much attention to that I, I just felt i was getting slapped in the face often with all the Mexican references. And sure, that, that's fine. I, I, at first, I was like, all right, that's cool. La Chona, all right, dope. Blah, blah. But by the end of the movie, it was like a, a lot of it was going on. Like almost every turn had a Mexican reference. So, uh, But most of them worked. Most of them worked. Like Chapulín, dude, 
Again, another thing, I don't want to go off the rails too much, but Chapulín, Chapulín Chespirito, Chavo del Ocho, that's my shit right there, guys. That's I, I grew up with that shit, dog, and I loved it. I loved Chavo del Ocho, La Escuelita, all that shit, dog. Uh, Profesor Girafales. El, uh, I love this. The, man, I forgot the, the, the two friends that live together, the two roommates. Oh, man. I love every part. El Dr. Chapatin. Bro, that's my that's my shit, dog. So seeing Chapulín in a DC universe was pretty dope. It was pretty cool. For sure, man. Um, a legend, a G. And, uh, uh, okay, I, 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 fine. I'm good with it. I'm good with it. All right? Um, but again, it's, it's, it's the it's the it's the patronizing. It's the patronism. It's like patronizing us a little too much is what I appreciate. That's all I'm trying to say there, fool. All right, those are two that I took right there. Let's see if I can find a couple more that of people who've messaged me about that. Um, shout out once again to my homie Bobble Frank, who's out there slanging in bobbleheads. Fool, hit him up if you need any. Uh, let me see here. No, I think that's it. Let me see. Let me see if I took any more screenshots. Oh, here's one. Uh, shout out to Nicolette Bravo. Nicolette Bravo. Okay. I've been catching up on the podcast since I don't drive over the summer. Teacher alert. Teacher alert. And first, I can't believe you made me listen to you talk about the Dodgers for a whole 10 minutes. You see what I mean? You see what I mean? You see the disrespect that I deal with, guys? Second... Next time you're trying to get the disability pass, just mention the Americans with Disability Act, ADA, and they'll give you whatever you ask for. Also, only use it when you when your nephew is there. Mad face. Hi, Nicolette. Hi, Nicolette. Um, yes. Fine. Again. Um. Sure. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, Doc. I think we covered a lot of that. But basically, you're right. I didn't want to get into it. Once they start questioning it, I don't want to get into it. I don't want to have to throw these fucking laws at them. Fucking Kramer versus Kramer shit at them, fool. I don't need to do all that, fool. It's either you're going to give it to me or you're not. You're going to take my word or you're not. All right? Uh, with Brandon there, it's like my nephew, when he's there, the actual person who needs it i uh sometimes i feel like i don't want to use it because i want to treat him normal which he wants to be treated normally so it's one of those situations dog but that's my boy and and next time i go yeah party i'm gonna try it again um may have to throw use that in my have that in my back pocket the ada act of 1996 whatever the fuck right maybe bring a lawyer an attorney with me that would be cool right uh some forms I don't know, but uh, I'm planning on Universal Studios soon. I'm planning on going to Universal Studios soon. I want to go check out the Mario World, and maybe this long weekend, we'll see if there's time, but I'm going to try again. And, and Universal Studios was, was another one that said no to me. Universal Studios looked me in my face and said, no, sir, we don't give those out anymore unless you have a doctor's note. Disneyland, they were a little bit more like, oh, we don't have those right now. I'm sorry, blah, 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 blah. I don't know what she, kind of excuse she gave me. But this other guy was like, looked in my face and was like, I know what you're doing, motherfucker. Bullshit. I call bullshit. Get the fuck out of here. That's basically what he was trying to tell me, fool. But next time I'll go, I'll go back and try it again. And I get it. I, I, apparently, everybody knows about this. That's the other thing. This thing is getting burned, fool. This thing is getting burned. Apparently, everybody knows about this, dog. Now, so... That's not fun. That's not cool either. All right. But thanks for the shout out, Nicolette. Uh, glad you're back. Uh, teachers back in school. Oh, man. It's still after they have two months off. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Uh, I think that's it with the shout outs. Um, let me see here. Uh, yeah, that's it. Let me get into some of the shows. Upcoming shows, man. I got some cool shows coming up. Uh, September... 9th and 10th, I'll be at the Covina Laugh Factory. Covina Laugh Factory. I was there actually last week doing a spot with Mr. Chingo Bling, who was in town. He asked me to come in. And I said, yeah, bro, I'm free, dog. Come kick it, dude. And uh, it was cool, man. Uh, Covina Laugh Factory is a great little comedy club. If you haven't checked it out, brand new. 
And uh, come check it out. I'll be there with Concrete September 9th and 10th. Uh, other new dates coming up also are uh, I'll be in Chandler, Arizona at the Mic Drop Mania. That's in October, October 20th and 21. Also, Hyenas Comedy Club. Hyenas Comedy Club. It's the uh, Friday, October 13th, Fort Worth. And Hyenas Comedy Club in Dallas, Saturday, October 14th. Uh, I don't know who I'm bringing with me on those yet, fool, but I'm sure someone will tag along. And a uh, quick update. Denver Improv, I had it down for October 26th. That date has been moved, guys. I know a couple of people bought their tickets already. But that date got moved to November 9th, Thursday, the day before Memorial, I mean, Veterans Day weekend. So we're hoping that's a better night. That Thursday night is going to feel like a Friday night, being that it's a long weekend, start of a long weekend. So hopefully that goes well for everybody, man. So uh, that's where I'm at, man. Real quick on the Dodgers, Nicolette, pay attention. Dodgers are looking great, okay? I, I can't say enough how beautifully they're playing. Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman are orgasmic, killing it every night. And what else can you ask for, bro? ¿Qué más quieres, compa? ¿Qué más quieres? The team looks legit, much better than last year. We got some great veterans. We're heading into the last month of the season. This is where we start, right, separating the men from the kids here, dog, and the veterans from the rookies, all right? We got to go into this damn playoff, and I think they're, they're not only are they great, playing great baseball, but I think they're in this zone right now where nothing can break them, at least not fácil way. So I'm very confident of whoever we play in the playoffs, whoever, bring on the Braves, bring on the Yankees, bring on Tampa Bay, bring on uh, Pinche Baltimore, bring on Astros, bring them all on, okay? I'm ready for, we're ready, dog. So I'm excited. What happened to the Diamondbacks? Pobrecitos, we just swept the Diamondbacks, dog. They actually thought they were going to win this year, fool, and I feel bad because he started off hot in the desert, First place, tied for first place on the All Star break, and I for for a second there I was giving them a little bit of props. I was like, hey, look at these guys, they're doing their thing, they're doing pretty good. Ah, oh, pobrecitos, way they're horrible for them. And the Padres también, anyway, no manches, way. At the end of the day, it, these teams got a lot more work to do than than they think. For they, we learned the hard way. They can't just buy championships. For we've been trying that. We tried that also doesn't work that way, dog. It's got to be a whole culture. It's got to be a whole team, every player, farm system, general management, upper office, owners, everybody on the same page. That's what it takes, dog. And also signing the right players, dude. Signing the right players because a lot of these guys get stuck with bad contracts. They invest in the wrong people. And that's what I talked about before, about Corey Seager, give me a thoroughbred white boy, like, that's just what I meant by it. Like sometimes you invest in the wrong people, people who are not used to having money, people who come from a a, a partying background, or people who are not uh, grown up, uh, immature, people who are just not ready, dog. And Dodgers, I mean, when they sign like Mookie Betts, they see more than just a good player. For they see the overall person, dog. Obviously, Freddie Freeman he said he got way. When you bring in these guys, like look look at Clayton Kershaw, fool. Like this guy's a Pichic, Christian, Baptist, whatever he is, a family guy. Like, those are the guys you put all your money in because they know, you know that they're not going to let you down. They don't want to let you down. But when, your money, when you start giving your money over to players, for example, Fernando Tatis, who already in the minor leagues and in rookie seasons, already getting into trouble, dog. Already partying a little too hard. Catching STDs. Getting pinche... Uh, stuck for steroids, bro. Like uh, getting it into it with fucking uh, cl- uh, beat your other teammates, bro. Like, and that's who you, and that's who they extend, and they extend him ten year contract when he's still on a rookie contract where you don't have to extend him. Like those kind of mistakes are like stupid and so obvious that it doesn't take a fucking wizard to figure that out, bro. Like it's so stupid, so simple, like. The, if the Dodgers had that these, he will still be in his rookie contract right now. Him having to have to earn a big contract and prove himself every year. Look what we did with Bellinger, bro. Like, I know Bellinger's having a great season and good for him, I guess, whatever. 
But the Dodgers tried everything with him, dude. And they paid him. And they took care of him, fool. And they gave, they were patient with him. And this guy was just not getting it through his head. He didn't want to learn. He didn't want to change. He didn't want to fix his fucking swing. If it, enough was enough, he had to go, bro. He had to go. And once he went, it's when he probably, like, woke up and shit. Like, oh, damn. Like, I'm indispensable. Or I got to prove myself in this new team. I, Bro, and he stepped up. I got to hand it to him. He stepped up. Uh, we wanted to give the money to Corey Seager, but we all did. But we all knew that he was coming off injuries. He had just given us a championship. He was probably giving us his all. He breaks down a lot, fool. And that's what the Dodgers say. You know what? Fuck it. You know, we tried to give it to Turner, but that fool didn't want to be here. He just didn't want to be here. So it is what it is, dog. It is what it is. All right. Look, like, look at the Angels, man. My God, they're a mess. My God. I feel bad for the fan base. I really do feel bad for the fan base because there are people who really root for these motherfuckers and invest their energy and their time and their money with these teams. And I do feel bad for them, dog. I do feel bad for teams that are just a mess always. Um, but that's what sports is, man. I love sports, man. We got football starting off next week. I'm in five fantasy football leagues. I'm excited. I've already had... Three drafts. I'm actually doing a fourth one tonight, Thursday. I got another draft. And uh, we'll see how that one goes. And I got a, my fifth and final draft will be Monday, Labor Day. So we'll see, dog. So far, so good. Of the three that I've drafted, I'm, I'm okay with it. Um, I tried different things. You know what I did? I try and do a little different stuff from when I did from one draft to another. Like I try and take a little bit more chances in one or I try to play safe in another one and so forth and so on. Um, that's kind of like my been my thing. I look around the room, especially the one on Monday is going to be in person. So I look around the room. There's a lot of weaklings out there. So I try and take, you know, be a, a step ahead of them, do my research a little bit more. And so, yeah, we'll be good, man. I love football, man. Football, more shit. And if you guys want to put a little a few dollars into some of these games, hit me up, bro. I know some people who know people. All right. All right, uh, that's pretty much it for me, guys. I'm going to wrap it up right there. I know it's kind of a short one, dog, but it's late, so I want to get it out to you as soon as possible. Uh, but those are my shows. That's what's going on right now, dude. Um, ho- Labor Day is this weekend. Uh, I'll be in town. I'll be doing local shows. I got the Laugh Factory on on Friday. Uh, I've, I got a bunch of pu- uh, uh, Ice House on Sunday. So I'll be locally for the next couple of weeks and um, just getting ready. I'm actually doing a, a, a taping in a couple of weeks in Utah, Salt Lake City, Utah. I'll be doing this show called a Dry Bar, and it's like this show where like they uh, they pay you with residuals. Like they're they're big on YouTube and they're big on social media, and so if your content does well, it, you know obviously they start giving you money for it. So I'm pretty excited about something like that. It's cool. Dry Bar, look out for it. I'll be filming that in, in Salt Lake City in September sometime. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it, dog. Other than that, just stay, staying afloat here, dog. Send me your messages. Ask me some questions, dog. Ask me some questions. I appreciate all the feedback I get from people. Always hitting me up, man. Sometimes I screenshot them. Sometimes I don't. Uh, let me see if I have any more podcast, uh, notes here. We did the Blue Beetle feedback. All right, all right, all right. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's it. All right. We'll wrap it there, fool. All right, guys, uh, that's it for me, man. Uh, I'm going to let you guys go right here. You guys have a great rest of the week, man. I'm Jerry G, man. Have a good one, and I'm out. Later.